episode number 206 of the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Angela Potter. Dr. Potter is a functional medicine naturopathic doctor and leading expert in PCOS fertility. She is the creator of the PCOS fertility protocol that helps women with an individualized approach to overcoming infertility with PCOS. Dr. Potter is also a speaker and has shared the stage with various CEOs and global thought leaders from corporations like Google, Microsoft, and Headspace. She has also been interviewed for articles on Healthline.com, and Dr. Potter is a nutritionist as well as a doctor. Welcome to the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. I'm Michelle, a fertility acupuncturist here to provide you with resources on how to create a wholesome approach to your fertility journey. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Potter. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's just a pleasure to be here with you. I'm so excited to get started with our conversation because we just talked in the pre-talk really quick about how interesting... PCOS, just talk, the topic is because every day you learn something new and you were talking about how there's a lot of misinformation and misguidance for a lot of patients out there. So I'd love for you to share your story and how you got interested in this topic. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, just over the years of seeing patients, women with PCOS and They would be coming into my practice saying things like, well, you know, I was meeting with my primary care doctor or my gynecologist, and they just basically handed me a pamphlet and told me that I had to lose 150 pounds and, and that's all they could do for me. Or, or maybe they gave them a prescription, right? Usually metformin Mm -hmm. is the first thing that's given. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, it was just, it was unhelpful. I really don't feel heard. And, you know, is there anything else I can do? And so just the more stories that I heard about that, I thought, oh my gosh, like, this is such a huge need. There are too many women out there that are struggling. Yeah. And so, you know, of course, like there are a lot of different options, which you and I are going to dive into today. And so, but it's, you know, so the biggest thing is that I want to say that You know, if you're in a spot where you're feeling dismissed or somebody is telling you that the only answer is to eat 500 calories a day and, you know, stay on your birth control until Mm -hmm. you're ready to go to, you know, IVF, like there's so much more out there for you. Oh, it's insane. I, I actually, looking back, think I had misdiagnosed PCOS because I had very irregular periods. There were times where I had cystic acne. I had hair loss at different times. It was just, there were so many different like things that I look back on. Now I I never got a visual on my ovaries, but I had extremely irregular periods. So it could have been very easily that I would have been diagnosed. And I also had a couple of things that I'm learning about it, which is why I'm saying it's so interesting because the more you find out, it's just, it's like a can of worms. One of the things that I found really interesting is that people who have PCOS, a lot of them tend to also have circadian rhythm disruption. And I, I definitely had that when I was younger, I look back and I think about like the things that I went through and it's really intriguing. And the thing about it too, that I find that can really confuse people and I think it also confuses doctors is that it doesn't look one particular way. Like it looks so different. There's some people, yeah, that have insulin resistance or maybe overweight. And then there's some people that are super thin. It really, there's no one way that PCOS shows up. It's so many different ways. Yes, exactly. I'm so glad you brought that up because too often women are left feeling like they need to fit into this box and Mm -hmm. PCOS isn't, isn't even anything that can fit in a box. And, um, you know, a lot of women are just getting kind of loosely diagnosed. So it's really important to hone in on the diagnosis Mm -hmm. because there's different ways to get diagnosed. And something that a lot of women don't know is that you don't have to have cysts on your ovaries to have PCOS. Yeah. Yeah. 
So there's different aspects of it. It's, um, you know, the androgens, And some people are completely and... regular, like they have a perfect textbook cycle. There's so many different ways that it shows up. Yes, exactly. So yeah, when I am talking to women, the first thing that I am saying is that it's really important to figure out your PCOS type because this is what's getting missed for so many women. And there's, there's four different types. And so we can break it down to really yeah, understand, yeah, what type. And oftentimes, you know, people really fit into like, yes, I am exactly this one type, but then also it's totally normal to be a mix of a few. Mm -hmm. So insulin resistance is the one of the types and it's one of the more common ones. A lot mm -hmm. of doctors out there even say that you, you know, insulin resistance is one of the key factors of PCOS, which as you just said, like not every woman has it. So it's yeah. important to see, okay, is this a key factor for you? Um, and so insulin resistance is, you know, the blood sugar issues and um, can lead to often that, that belly weight gain. And, um, but even more than that, it can lead to mood swings. It can lead to the sleep disorders, insomnia, Mm -hmm. uh, all these, all these things. And what's happening is that the, the insulin, your blood sugar is too high. It's going up and down too much during the day. And then those insulin receptors are not acting as they should. And they mm -hmm. actually talk to the ovaries. Mm -hmm. And so if your insulin is not doing what it's supposed to be doing, then your ovaries aren't responding. And that can be a direct correlation with infertility. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's a really big piece. Yeah. Another type of PCOS is the post pill PCOS. Mm -hmm. And that's actually one of the most common ones that I see in my practice. And this one, the hallmark of this type is, okay, you had regular periods, super easy, you know, regular, easy bleeding, no cramps. And then you got on the pill or some sort of hormonal birth control, maybe hormonal IUD Mm -hmm. And then got off of that, all of a sudden your cycles are irregular, you're getting the acne, maybe lots of weight gain, and all of a sudden you have PCOS. Mm -hmm. So this one, because we see how strongly the pill or hormonal birth control affects the liver in the body, this type of PCOS can be reversed most easily because we see that it's just a mechanism of, you know, working on the liver and mm -hmm. supporting our detox system. Mm -hmm. And so, but it's really important to understand that, you know, it's, a, it's nothing that you did wrong, right? It's just that we need to figure that out. You know, you need an approach that can understand how to help your body in this time after you've come off of the birth control. Mm -hmm. And then the third type of PCOS is adrenal specific, which mm -hmm. our adrenal glands is, you know, our, our stress mechanism in the body. And mm -hmm. It's where our stress hormone cortisol is released. And so we can test certain hormones to see if the adrenal glands are releasing hormones as they should be. Mm -hmm. And if not, then we need to regulate that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a big issue in our world because all of us are just exposed to so many stressors on a daily basis. And mm -hmm. I mean, let alone dealing with infertility, of course, that's a huge stress, right? You're going to be super yeah, upset absolutely. And emotional. Yeah. So is this one, could this one be caused? by stress can the, you mean the type can stress because, cause yeah yeah so if somebody is under you know huge amounts of stress and the body is not reacting well to that stress mm -hmm. so here's the thing let me start by saying this it's not that i'm saying okay you know go ahead and lose stress lose your stress like mm -hmm. do a little bit of meditation and feel less stress and everything will open up for you mm -hmm. because again infertility is such a stressful journey you're going to be really yes. emotional throughout it right and that's mm -hmm. That's a disservice to say to someone who's struggling with infertility, like, oh, yeah. honey, just go, you know, of lose course. Your stress. Right? Yeah. 
So yeah, so what we're talking about is, you know, we want to actually look at physiologically what's happening in the body, how your body internally is responding to the stress that you're exposed to. Mm -hmm. And so we can look at that through a variety of ways. DHEA is one hormone and then cortisol is the other hormone Mm -hmm. that we look at to address what's going on in the adrenal glands. Mm -hmm. And so if those are out of balance, then that stress response is most likely contributing to your infertility Mm -hmm. and having improper cortisol release during the day, then that cascades into more blood sugar issues, which Mm -hmm. then directly affects the ovary. So it's this whole cycle. And I love to remind people that it is not just about your lady parts Mm -hmm. when it comes to fertility, right? right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to not stay focused just on, you know, okay, what are my ovaries doing? What are my reproductive hormones doing? There's so much more to it than that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Mm -hmm. guts at the center of so much as well and the inflammation as well. Yeah. Yes. Right. And so the fourth type of PCOS is inflammatory PCOS. Yeah. Yeah which we see, well, stress can certainly lead to inflammation Mm -hmm. and um, gut issues as well. If, you know, you don't have a healthy microbiome, if your body is just on high alert all the time from foods that you're eating, that's putting you in an inflammatory state. And, you know, for, for those of you that are listening, it's like, how would you know that you're in a high inflammation state. I mean, there's certainly lab tests you can get done, but that's going to be like, if you have an autoimmune condition that those Mm -hmm. are inflammatory states, if you have, you know, like, um, creaky joints and muscle pains that Mm -hmm. just seem kind of out of nowhere and you feel sluggish and tired all the time, even when you're sleeping well. And so those Mm -hmm. are a few signs of this inflammation happening in the body. Yeah. I remember having times when I was younger and like, and I I didn't always lose my hair, but there were times where I I would lose a lot of hair and I would start breaking out. And it was usually, and it was one time when I was in a bad relationship and I had a lot of high stress. And it was interesting because I do feel like when I was in high stress, it exacerbated my symptoms, it got worse. Like I, I wouldn't get my period for even longer. Like it really got worse. And, um, and it's interesting how, you know, looking back when I wasn't feeling myself or comfortable in my environment, it definitely impacted my symptoms and my menstrual cycle and like my cramps and probably like my inflammation went through the roof. Who knows? I mean, it's just interesting to look back. Yeah, right. You know, and this is what's so fascinating about our bodies, because if we have lots of stress, you know, lots of cortisol running through our body constantly, well, that's lowering your digestion. So when you're eating your foods, your body's not absorbing foods as it's supposed to. Right. So that's, you know, contributing to some leaky gut you know, undigested foods. So you're not getting Mm -hmm. proper nutrients Mm -hmm. and then that's affecting the liver as well. That's, you know, increasing estrogen in the body and which lowers progesterone and which contributes to the acne cramps, all these things. So it's just, yeah, it's just fascinating how all these things work together. Yeah, definitely. It's mm-hmm. it's just so interesting how the body works and you think about like how the environment or how you feel like physically and mentally and over time, I mean, your body really responds to what you're feeling and, wh- and what you're feeling responds to your body state as well. It's like kind of back and forth. <laughs> it's a relationship. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it's a trick to figure out, okay, do I need to be working on my body right now or do I need to be working on my environment? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so you see a lot of people having a mix of all of these. One of the things that I was thinking about too, it's it's so crazy because people with insulin resistance, I feel like no matter what they eat, it's going to be hard for them to lose weight. And they're being given so many, like so many unrealistic expectations in order to lose weight when they, they can't lose it. Like your body holds on to the weight when you have that condition. 
Yeah, right. That, that can be really difficult. And a lot of these women are getting that advice, like, well, you know, if only you were able to lose this weight, you right. would be able to get pregnant. And then that leaves you just feeling like your body's working against you. Yeah, and that's not right. And so, you know, there's a variety of ways to support weight loss with PCOS. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm not against these medications that are being used for PCOS. They're mm -hmm. very good in certain instances. And what's happening is that most doctors are just jumping up to giving these medications and saying, here, try this, but this is really all it's very I have strong. for you. Yeah. It's like starting off strong. really strong rather than there are many supplements I'm sure you're going to be talking about now mm -hmm. that work almost the same or actually might be even better, better for fertility. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, talking about metformin, many doctors are recommending that first, first line. Yeah. And, you know, I like to really take the time to figure out, well, what's the root cause of each person's fertility picture. Mm -hmm. And if it's very strongly that insulin resistance, well, metformin, it was first developed as a drug for type two diabetes. So mm -hmm. it's meant to support that insulin resistance. So sometimes that can be really supportive for that mm -hmm. person's weight loss journey. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I mean, there's so much to look at from a whole body perspective to support that weight loss. So a couple of things that we have talked about already. So that stress response mm -hmm. is really important in lowering weight. Again, I am not saying like, if only you could lose your stress and mm -hmm. then you would lose all this weight because it's never, you know, too often in medicine, we get these messages about how, well, if I'm doing something wrong with my body and, and that's not at all. It is important, important to know what could cause just to empower people because I really do think information is empowering to know this can happen, that can happen. And just to know what's going on because like people come in and they feel like they're in the dark. They don't know like yes. what's what. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So getting your stress response checked, right? And that's really getting your cortisol levels looked at, your DHEA. Typically we look at DHEA sulfate. Right. Um, and so what's happening is that if your cortisol is, it, it's in this really nice rhythm throughout the day. So it's high in the morning and then right. it slowly lowers and then falls at night. So then your melatonin can rise mm -hmm. for you to go to sleep. That's our sleep hormone. Right. But <clears throat> if cortisol is just elevated all day long, or if it's flatlined all day long, mm -hmm. then, you know, you're not, if it's elevated, you're going to be like feeling incredibly anxious. You're not going to be able to sleep very well. You're going right. to be holding on to a lot of weight. If it's flatlined throughout the day, you're going to be pretty sluggish. You might have some underlying depression or anxiety and, mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately also holding on to that weight. Mm -hmm. So getting that, and there are some really very effective ways to get your cortisol back into balance um, right. that are really simple. Yeah. And it makes you feel good too, because cortisol creates that anxiety in your body. And so when you get your cortisol under control, then, oh my gosh, like yeah. you don't have anxiety. Like you sleep better at night. And, <laughs> and then really looking at gut health too, to understand again, this weight loss picture. So there are tests that we can do to look at gut health. But a lot of times I was, so I was a nutritionist before becoming a doctor. So I had many years of working in this field. Mm -hmm. And so just talking about symptoms and foods that you're eating and how you're eating throughout the day, that can just paint this really clear picture often of what's happening in your gut. Mm -hmm. And so focusing on improving gut health, really uh, supporting your microbiome, making sure that there's no leaky gut issues going on. Mm -hmm. That's really important for this weight loss picture. And then also one thing that we haven't touched on yet is the importance of thyroid. Mm -hmm. And um, because that is your thyroid hormone directly talks to your ovaries mm -hmm. and hypothyroidism or an autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Mm -hmm. Those are really common 
infertility for women, you know, struggling with infertility in general, but then also with PCOS. Right. And then of course, what do we see with low functioning thyroid? It's that weight gain. Mm -hmm. And so if no one's checked the thyroid for you, or even, you know, it's really common for a lot of like primary care doctors to just test for TSH, our Mm -hmm. main thyroid hormone. Mm -hmm. And if that's the normal range, then it's just brushed off. Right. (laughs) Normal range and fertility (laughs) range are two different things. Exactly. (laughs) Yes. So the fertility optimal range is much tighter for Mm -hmm. TSH. Yeah. And then also we want to look at the other hormones, the free T4, free T3. You've got to look at your thyroid antibodies. That's right. That will tell you if you have the autoimmune condition, Hashimoto's or not. Yeah. And so uh, this weight loss picture, you know, ah, yeah, it can feel like such a big journey, but when you've got the right support for your body in this really holistic perspective, Mm -hmm. then it can be a lot easier to lose the weight. Yeah, definitely. What's interesting too is uh, metformin, one of the side effects is it causes you to have loose stools, which is not great for your gut. (laughs) It probably causes more inflammation. I know. Yeah, Yeah. that's one of the biggest side effects. And one of the Mm -hmm. reasons that women are just like, no, thank you. Yeah. But, you know, there's ways to support your insulin resistance without using metformin. Myo-inositol is going to be the biggest thing that people will use. Yeah. Yeah, which is really beneficial for fertility as well. And then there's a host of other things that can be tried if myo-inositol isn't working for you. I mean, that's going to be like the first direct line. But again, it's all about like what's going on with your specific body and your picture. And if myo-inositol is not the, the one thing that works for you, mm-hmm. then, you know, we just look at, we look at different herbs. We look at different foods to add into your diet and, mm-hmm. and these different things. Yeah, for sure. And then as far as uh, so gut health, you'll look at inflammatory markers or you'll do maybe like a gut testing, like a stool testing to see what's going Mm on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So usually it's a stool test and it'll look at inflammation. It can assess the microbiome and it can look at different, you know, bacteria levels and it gives just a nice picture to see, okay, what's going on? Is it more, is it leaky gut going on? Is there just too much inflammation? Is there a imbalance of the, the, microbiome, the probiotics in the gut, and then we can get a clear picture of how to move forward. Yeah. One thing too, with PCOS, people really respond so well to nutrition and supplements. It's amazing. I've seen people's symptoms completely drop. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so important to talk about that people can reverse their PCOS. Mm -hmm. So people hear completely different perspectives when they go to the doctor, that there is nothing you can do, you know, the usual, the usual things. I know. And I mean, doctors literally tell people that there is no treatment and, you know, that brings us back, you know, okay, maybe PCOS is not that cut and dry, that one medication is going to fix it all. But that's why we, we've got to look at it in this holistic way. Like first figure out what your type is of PCOS. What's the root cause of your fertility issues, get to that level of understanding what's going on in your body. And that's when all of this fertility potential opens up. Yeah. It's really cool. It is cool. It really is amazing. And mm-hmm. what have you found in working with people like because for me, I say three months, it, it takes a couple of cycles. It's more based on fertility. The egg health improves. What have you found to be more or less a time where people can see a difference from making lifestyle changes? Yeah, that's a great question. And that really depends on where the person is starting from, like mm-hmm. kind of how how long these symptoms have been going on for them, how, you know, severe they're feeling in their body. I've seen things turn around in as quick as three months. 
Sometimes for people who have been dealing with this for a long time, and particularly who have been on the pill for a long time, Mm -hmm. I really advise strongly to take a few months to do a a nice detox Mm -hmm. in the body. And really what that's doing is supporting the liver to then help with hormone balance Mm -hmm. and detoxification in the body, get rid of excess estrogens. Mm -hmm. And we see that that just helps with fertility so much. But what you want to do with that is, you know, a detox we can do in about a month, but you want to wait at least six months up to a year before you start trying to conceive again, because Mm -hmm. you don't want to be conceiving at a time when your body is just like dumping all these toxins out of the body. And so that is on a case by case basis. And depending on how fast women are ready to get pregnant or how much they want to be working on their body. But yeah, so it can be anywhere from, you know, three months up to a year. What kind of detox do you usually recommend? Yeah, that's a good question. It, again, it depends on the person's picture. Yeah. I always incorporate a, like a nutritional piece to it as well as supplements. And so it's typically like a detox powder that we use. I add in a lot of fiber because that's such an important part of the detox process Mm -hmm. and, and building up the microbiome. Sometimes we forget like how much fiber is really great for healthy micro microbes in our gut. Definitely. And then adding in that nutritional piece. So, you know, I'm not one to put people on really restrictive, strict diets, Mm -hmm. particularly for fertility. It's more about, okay, what kind of nutrients can we be adding into the diet? Right. You know, fertility and weight loss because often that's so important for PCOS. And, but for these detox times, it is a time where we eat specific foods. And then it's also a time where we can see, okay, are you responding poorly? Do you have any sensitivities to foods? Is this part of the the gut health picture that's going on for you that we can uncover through the detox process? And, you know, is that causing is eating this particular food causing more inflammation in your body? Do we need to avoid it and work on your gut health and then bring it back in, you know, as this part of your fertility picture? Definitely. And and gut health can be so tricky because at first when you're helping the gut and you're taking those probiotics and eating that fiber, it can actually make you feel worse (laughs) for a little while until it like catches on and like starts a new environment in there. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell people, like I give them a disclaimer if they've never taken a probiotic before, (laughs) Uh (laughs) you might be bloated for a few days, Yeah, just get through it. It's going to be okay. It's so much better on that. It gets better. Yeah. Some of them, I mean, they suggest to do it every other day, start with every other day. Same thing with like kimchi or sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. Go easy. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like to remind people, I mean, you know, 150 years ago, which is not that long ago in human history, people were reliant on fermented foods because we didn't have refrigerators, you know? Right. So what did they have to do? They had to ferment their foods or Mm -hmm. eat them fresh and raw because fermentation is the way to keep foods for a long time to preserve them. And so their diets were just plentiful of all these good microbes and so we're living in a state where now you know we're a few generations in to not eating all of these good fermented foods and so it takes some time when we reintroduce that for our bodies to go whoa okay oh yeah totally (laughs) it's funny yeah they totally it's like for me too i was like whoa what is going on i was so bloated and you know my kids didn't want to be around me (laughs) like mom Yeah, it could do a lot. Yeah, and then it's got better, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it gets much better. But um, I was going to ask you, so so talk about like some common myths that you've heard with PCOS. Yeah. I think you, yeah. you addressed a couple in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the biggest one is there is no treatment, mm-hmm. um, you know, and that, again, what to do about that is to really figure out your type of PCOS. Mm -hmm. 
And um, so then you have just that clear path forward. Right. Another myth is that, you know, you can't get pregnant with PCOS. Right. I mean, women are literally hearing this from their providers, from, you know, online research. And that's just, you know, maybe some, I'm certainly not here to say like, there is a magic pill, like, yeah, everyone can get pregnant. But yeah, if you're in this place where you're still searching for answers and you've been only told, you know, well, I, you know, here's some metformin, this is all that we can do for you. Like there's this huge missing piece for your health. And there are very specific ways that your body is react or um, expressing the PCOS that we've got to figure out for you so Mm -hmm. that this fertility can be just open up for you. And, you know, so often our medicine is just this assembly line kind of medicine where doc, you know, so assembly line being like, okay, a car mechanic, right? Like Mm -hmm. there's one person to work on a door and, but if you need to work on your engine, like the person that works on the door can't help you. Right. And so often with fertility medicine, this is what's happening, right? The doctor says, well, all I can do for you is the metformin. And then I'm going to refer you for IUI or IVF. You're going to be on Clomid. And this is just jumping to this high level fertility drugs and procedures right away. Mm -hmm. And it's missing this whole big piece of your health and what's causing the fertility. And so, you know, if you're able to understand that, then, you know, you're, you're going to have the best chances of becoming pregnant. And then, okay, if, you know, we get you so far and then you do need the IUI or IVF, like that's fine. Those are great therapies that have been discovered. And then you just have even more chance of those working. Totally. You know, yeah. Because so often we think like IVF is just a panacea for mm-hmm. infertility, but if it were, everyone would just need one round, right? Yeah. There's it- one fertility doctor here who I absolutely adore. <laughs> She's great. She uh-huh. talks to people about diet. She talks, she sends a lot of people to me because she believes in acupuncture. She said, I don't know why, but it works. And, and she's also, she doesn't give him a one size fits all Dr. Palmarola. If anybody mm-hmm. wants to know Catherine Palmarola with IVF MD in Florida oh, and great. it's just so nice when you find doctors that really look at different aspects and also try different things if things don't work the first time so that you're not wasting the patient's time. And I see, I mean, she has a great success rate because of that. She doesn't think one way and it's beautiful. Like it's really, so when I see that, I praise that. I think it's amazing. I think everybody should work like that. (laughs) Yes, right. You know, and then- And people are out there. So look, you know, if you're not finding that, keep seeking out people. Yes, absolutely. Because if you're in that place where you're feeling hopeless because your provider is is telling you that there is no hope and not giving you any explanations, mm-hmm. yeah, it's time to find another provider. Yeah. Because yeah, there are answers. For sure. And there are amazing providers out there. It's just important to keep looking and get multiple opinions and also really building a team. I think that it's every medicine has its place and it's all important. But if you have a team, you're getting different perspectives. So if you have a naturopathic doctor or an acupuncturist or nutritionist, and then also a medical doctor, and you're getting all the different perspectives together, it helps because then if one person's too extreme on one side, you have the balance and you're getting different sides and it helps you to see things more clearly in regards to your health. I think it's really important if you can, I know it's a lot to pay for, but some people they go once a month or once every two weeks to the acupuncturist or just to have at least some kind of touch base and to get a perspective is really huge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And you know, speaking of cost, if, if you're looking at IVF, you know, that's upwards of $30,000. Yeah. It's crazy. And which sometimes people are taking loans out for. And if you're yeah. jumping to that without first figuring Correct. out what's going on with your health, like mm-hmm. you're not going to have as high of a chance with IVF. So it's really, 
it's worth it to invest in your health before that. To oh, one hundred percent. What can open up for you? Yeah, it's interesting because I had one of my patients. She had PCOS, rheumatoid arthritis, type one diabetes, Hashimoto's. I believe she also had the MTHFR gene mutation Mm -hmm. and she went through, she eventually went to get fertility treatments because she got pregnant, miscarried, and then went to get fertility treatments and then (laughs) was working with me though. And we changed her diet. I did actually a a stool test for her. We saw there was a ton of inflammation, like let's work on that. So it was hard at first for her to change her diet. Some of the food was too inflammatory, I had mentioned to her. And so we removed certain foods and she was about to do her IVF and she got, she was pregnant and now she has two boys. (laughs) So that's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, you know, it's just, it's just such a good example of how if you spend, and she was with me for a good six to nine months before Mm -hmm. all of this. So like she really spent time and things were changing and shifting where it just shows that if you really put those roots down and make those changes, your body does respond. It really does over time. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's so empowering when so often we're getting this information about, you know, well, you need to go see someone to understand what's going on in your body and you Mm -hmm. don't have any control of what's going on in your body, but you do and you Mm -hmm. have control over who you want to go see, the different types of therapies you want to get. Yeah. And, and yes, if you seek it out, like you can get these answers for this transformation for your body. Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. Well, mm-hmm. Dr. Potter, this was such a great conversation. I can talk for hours about this, but of course we were limited in time and I'd love for you to share how people can reach out and find you. Yes. Great. So yeah, I have virtual sessions open. So I'm based here in Portland, Oregon, but I work with women around the country And so if you're in that place where you're feeling hopeless and feeling like your body's broken, then I invite you to sign up for one of those sessions. It's free. It's an I want my body to work right PCOS breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And really the benefits of this is where you and I are going to meet and talk about, you know, what's been missing from your care that's keeping you from seeing results Mm -hmm. and what's, what's been missing and how you can then turn around your fertility health so that you can have the best chance at becoming pregnant. So I'm sure you, you'll put the link in yep. the show notes. Exactly. It's drangelapotter.com mm-hmm. forward slash PCOS. So awesome. Yeah. I'll put all of that in the show notes. So if anybody wants to check it out, they're all in there as well right. as the social media links and the YouTube channel. So thank you so much, Dr. Potter, for coming on today and to talk about this really, really important topic. Yes. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's just been delightful talking with you. So that concludes today's episode. You can find all of the links mentioned on the episode notes. If you're enjoying these episodes, please take a moment to share and leave a review. Reviews mean everything to podcasters, and I really enjoy hearing from my listeners. You can also find me on my website at www.thewholesomelotus.com or email me at info at thewholesomelotus.com. I love hearing from my listeners. If you're interested and want updates as well as a free ebook on my top 10 fertility boosting habits, you can visit my fertility page on www.thewholesomelotus.com thewholesomelotus.com. I thank you so much for listening in and hope that you have a beautiful day.